Hello, good evening, traders. Welcome to the live webinar with FXDD. My name is Chris from Elite Currency, and together we're going to take a look at the global economy and some charts. That's the main focus, the impact of what we expect the global economy will do this year and uh, perhaps a little bit next year and its impact on the financial markets. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, that. So welcome. Thanks for joining. Looking forward to take a look at that together. First of all, though, we need to discuss this risk disclaimer very quickly. It explains the fact that the trading in general is considered high risk and trading for exchange in specific is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please read this the disclaimer and be aware of all the risks involved before thinking about trading and uh, also seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. All right. Hi, Ali. Hi, David. Good to see you all in here. We had a first part uh, which discussed Brexit and the U.S. economy already. You can check it out on the uh, YouTube channel of FXDD. It's uploaded there. So if you missed that, you can still see the replay of that and find it in in that channel all right and you can see the uh, screenshot right on the right side of this screen so today we're going to be talking about the global economy instead specifically uh, not only about the us and uh, and the uk 2019 trends and a lot of chart analysis all right so i think that um from from this perspective of the global economic trends i mentioned it already actually a, a week ago that the growth forecast is looking steady. 3.7% GDP growth is have we have seen and is expected. That's a sturdy growth. So all things are looking pretty good from a global level and seem to be continuing that way. There are some risk factors that we'll discuss that uh, and that we have already mentioned a week ago that could play effect, maybe not this year, but perhaps in 2020. And that also depends, of course, on how will this year uh, behave? What will, what will happen with, for instance, the trade wars that maybe could be occurring between the US and China? Will they continue? Will they worsen? What kind of effect will they have? We already showed that they will impact China more than the US, but they will have a negative effect on both countries. What about Brexit? How is that going to play into the world economy? Right? What kind of effect will that have on UK and the EU? And we'll have elections in the EU as well. By the way, I didn't mention that here. Plus, of course, the Italian debt problem that is uh, causing a little bit of trouble as well in, uh, in Europe. We have also some Chinese uh, slight dip in their growth. How will that impact uh, other countries? So there are, you know, despite the good numbers that we've seen the last couple of years, Sturdy growth, sturdy expansion, with some couple of exceptions, of course, where uh, those countries are not doing that well. Um, generally speaking, overall, good continuation of, of the growth in the last few years. And 2019 is expected to be the same, but we definitely see some risk factors. Also in the US, we mentioned already uh, the fact that uh, you know the interest rates are there is a inversion uh, of the rates that we would expect that typically indicates or forecasts a potential recession about 12 months from now. The fact that we've had a 10 year uh, basically growth, you know, usually we'll see a, a, small, a slowdown uh, and a recession of some sort. All right. So US growth is important. China growth is important. These are pillars of these global numbers. And often countries follow the lead of the US. So that's why we had a uh, half a webinar last time just on the US itself. Now, the growing interest rates, although they are still on the low side, historically speaking, in the US, but they are growing slightly and they are putting pressure on emerging markets and trade deficits but still very low historically. So uh, it's a little bit of a tricky situation. The West has quite a lot of debt as well and doesn't have a lot of space to combat the next recession. We talked about that last time. The, uh, the governments have already spent a lot of money in the West, at least. The, the budgets are quite maxed out. And also the central banks have spent a lot already in the US, in, the, in Europe, and uh, and in Japan. So there seems to be less 
space from a monetary and fiscal policy, from a governmental point of view and from a central bank point of view to, to combat the next recession. And I think Ali made a point, I think a week ago, I think it was you, but it could have been someone else. Uh, perhaps I'm mistaken, but that said, why are we looking at recessions so much? They don't tend to happen that often. That's a fair point. And I think the reason, one of the reasons why it might be because of this, because the world is not that prepared for the next recession. It could be a struggle to um, to combat that. And the growth is, is, is good, but in the U.S. you also see some signs of that the growth is not as strong as you would like it. The average you know, salary, for instance, the wage growth is not as good as you would like to see it. Uh, the inflation is maybe not as strong, and hence the interest rate has not gone up that much. So it, it is a growth, but it's a slow growth. And it doesn't seem to be as, you know, some it's, yes, cracks in the economy, uh, in the U.S. at least, one could say, one could definitely argue that. And, uh, you know, some of this growth is a little bit artificial. The, the buying back of the stocks is, you know, is, is one of those aspects, for instance. So, yeah, uh, not as sturdy as other growths, although this one has been long. And the difficulty of combating the next recession are worrying factors. How, plus if you tie in, i.e. artificial intelligence and new, uh, new developments in tech and the automation and basically the replacement of labor so that the next recession the companies might actually scale down their workforce and the unemployment rates could therefore go up a lot much, a lot higher or, or stronger than we've seen in previous recessions. That is a risk, of course, that is difficult to fully predict and forecast, but is present. And a lot of reports have cited that already, uh, that risk that, you know, 50% of the jobs are at risk in the next 10 years or so. Uh, City Bank made a report I read once uh, about this. So, the recession could trigger a, a bigger unemployment rate, of course, and that uh, unemployment growth, and of course, that would not be good for, and it would be difficult to combat such a re, such a uh, development and make a recovery from that, especially if fiscal and monetary policy are already kind of like tied down uh, a little bit. So, I think this is why you know there is worry about uh, about that. All right, so. Let's see, IMF, internet, uh, yes, the uh, monetary fund saying policy uncertainty is something that will impact potentially 2019. There will be a new ECB president in October 2019. And uh, Bloomberg is expecting 1% growth in Italy and 1.7 in Germany. So a lot of kind of question marks, unknown, unknowns or some unknown uh, knowns and known unknowns and et cetera that uh, could be on our way uh, as the image already shows here with the question mark. That could be really difficult uh, for 2020. Maybe not 2019 or not the first 75% of it, but at the end, curious how that will play out. All right now, fundamentals are always difficult to forecast and predict. Therefore, we like technicals the most uh, for short-term trading, for intermediate trading, um, but if you're looking at long-term trends, then fundamentals, of course, are very, very uh, useful and important. But in the short term, you know, these things don't tend to change that quickly. Of course, a Brexit uh, will have a lot of impact, as we've seen the last couple of weeks. But generally speaking, these are more long-term things. Yes, we're going to take a look at the charts very soon, actually. Uh, we'll take a look at your pound as well. And we'll take a look at uh, some live charts, too, later on. Uh, so... Global economic trends, China is at 6.4 at the moment, but it is the lowest, despite the pretty high rate, it is the lowest since 1989. And um, that is increasing as far as I am aware, so that's, I think, an error, but it is hurt by the terrorists from the US. And um, yeah, basically, Japan also will see potential sales hike, by the way, in October. And that could weaken some export growth as well, which is not good for uh, the global economy. So could, you know, 
slow down their consumption, of course, logically, which would slow down their uh, your growth rate. So, and of course, slow down uh, their imports as well, perhaps. In any case, slow down business activity. All right, so uh, the Chinese Yuan, um, trying to weaken it to make it more competitive, but of course, at the same time, that would make the U.S. debt more expensive. So it's a it's an either or kind of scenario for China. They are a little bit in a tough spot at this moment. I think maybe one of the toughest spots ever since their growth spurt thirty years ago. It's difficult to say if that's really the case, but it's it's not an easy situation with their growth a little bit slowing down. Um, they have pretty high debt on all levels at this moment. U.S. is placing pressure on them. Not, a, not an easy spot, I think, at this moment. All right. With regard to India, there's going to be elections as well, just like in the EU. So some political uncertainty there. So you can see why the IMF was already hinting at a lot of policy uncertainty, as they, as they said, right? A lot of things to look at uh, for this year. All in all, though, the forecast is, as I mentioned, just to conclude, 2019 is steady as it goes. That's what's expected. But 2020 could be more risky. Ali is adding, by the way, with regard to uh, China keeping the CNY weak, the Chinese uh, currency, uh, they're trying to negotiate with the U.S. about the trade war. That's why the dollar CNY dropped in uh, recent weeks maybe all right so just to keep that in mind this is the euro dollar and this is the monthly chart we'll take a look at live charts in just a second I just wanted to already have this prepared for you uh, and you can see that i'm expecting some dollars some euro strength actually then some dollar strength and then again euro strength so there's going to be maybe some consolidation unless it breaks below 103 this bottom right here uh where i have the uh, arrow uh, I'm expecting actually your dollar to make one more upside uh, to at least about 130, maybe even higher than that, and break this resistance trend line eventually. Uh, so there could be a little bit of pullback. We might get a head and shoulders. Those purple boxes indicate that. So we might get an upside. The green arrow could indicate that. Hit the head and shoulders and resistance trend line. Then make one more lower low, hit the 78.6 fib, and then bounce off of that fib towards the minus 272 target. Now, how the fundamentals will fit to make this happen and will they make that happen i don't know this is my technical and wave analysis that i you know i'm using uh, and, and analyzing um we'll see if the fundamentals fit in or not a lot of times they do and for whatever reason uh you know price you know and fundamentals go almost hand in hand sometimes obviously they don't but all of these long-term forecasts have played out pretty pretty good and um you can see that uh, for the moment, uh, I'm expecting your dollar to move up just as a correction. So there could be maybe more dollar strength this year, maybe as the U.S. still, what could happen is, for instance, the, in the, in the fun, from the fundamental point of view, is that the U.S. increases uh, the rate still this year, which will create that dollar strength. And then maybe that recession hits. The U.S. probably first. That's often how it happens. Maybe end of 2019. There's the start of a recession, and the U.S. starts to drop the rates then, kick this euro dollar back up again, for instance. So I'm just giving you one potential path how fundamentals could make this euro dollar move up uh, as and down as I forecast uh, here at this moment. All right, so let's keep an eye on this blue box and the purple boxes. Yes, Ali says, or or perhaps a euro rate hike or less quantitative easing, for instance. Um, you know, the eurozone has had a lot of quantitative easing as well. Unprecedented for so long, I guess. U.S. dollar, your U.S. has finally slowed down that quant or has no quantitative easing and has finally raised rights. Has finally showed some tightening, of course, but marginal, still quite shallow tightening if you compare it to the past but the euro zone has not even ventured into that kind of terrain as as the us the euro is still at zero percent if i remember correctly the us is already up at two and a half both are low but the euro is even lower all right pound dollar of course brexit is going to play an impact 2019 march is the year where we expect uh the uk uh, to make a decision and it's expected to leave in march 29th that's 
two months and a week from now. And if they exit just like that without any deal, yes, I do think the pound with dollar will fall. I think the pound will weaken because of that. And uh, we'll see inflation probably because of the higher cost for imports. That could trigger eventually interest rate hikes, but that's further down the line. Of course, if pound does offer higher interest rates, that could make the pound again stronger and we could see maybe the pound dollar rise again. But that will probably happen only if we get a lower low. Uh, I expect price to, to break this low and go below 120 and uh, aim for 110. All right, and continue with this downtrend. And how far and deep it will retrace, it could go up to 132, maybe 133. Don't expect much more within this kind of correction. Dollar yen looking at a triangle at this moment. I expect the triangle to break to the upside. That could happen this year. We've been in this triangle already for four years. So that could be a logical moment that that might happen this year. Uh, looking at uh, this pattern, I'm looking at a wave A, B, C, D, E. And up we go for a bullish break. In fact, wave E could have been completed already. We This is a older chart here from, a, from a, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, I'll show live charts in just a second. And uh, actually, we tested this bottom without breaking it. So wavy could have been completed in the meantime. And uh, we could be ready for a move up if we break above this resistance trend line. I wouldn't be surprised if the dollar yen finally breaks this uh, triangle to the upside. For I already forecasted the uptrend back in 2012 for the dollar yen as it uh, was already in a major downtrend at the time and indicated that there could be a cycle change. That happened. We had five waves to the upside. Now we've been in a consolidation ever since. And, you know, expecting or forecasting when this pattern will finally um, break is a little bit difficult. That's why it's always best to wait for the trend line. But we might be close. We'll take a look at that in a second. All right, gold weekly charts looking for a triangle pattern that could happen too before we get an uptrend continuation. Perhaps not this year, because if you know the economy will do fairly well this year, probably no reason to for gold to go up that much necessarily. But if there's some recession maybe next year, uh, we might see uh, gold needing take off as a as a risk um, avoidance if. For instance, the dollar is faring weak and the euro is faring weak and there could be some, um, yeah, basically flight of safety, you know, for, for gold and that could push the gold up maybe into 2020, right? 2020, sorry. Oil is a little bit volatile, is moving up a lot stronger now than I expected, but still I think it could be a way for, for one more lower low and a downtrend continuation for the moment. But if it, you know, it depends, that's a little bit, I wouldn't, here I'm not as certain as the others, I have to admit. I'm just sharing you my analysis, what I think is most likely. But I want to add that with oil, things are a little bit volatile and I'm not attaching a lot of uh, probability to this analysis. DAX 30, uh, the German index, of course, is uh, making a bearish correction. And I would expect probably a pretty corrective year for the moment i think on all the stock indices i know a year is very long but it just looks like it entered in a corrective terrain and it might stay corrective for a while same with s p 500 i think uh, we've seen long uptrends and i think that they're gonna you know i'm not saying it will crash necessarily but i think there could be a lot of volatile volatile ups and downs and prices going sideways maybe is the net result and who knows if at the end of the year, a recession might start. We might see a bigger dip or a bigger retracement eventually occur. But those you know, bigger retracements are very difficult from a timing perspective, especially on stocks and stock indices. It's a little bit easier in Forex in my, my point of view. Uh, Dow Jones, same thing really. Uh, and last but not least, Bitcoin. What would 2019 bring? Well, 2018 was nothing. It was just downtrend and correction so far. I'm looking for a lower low and then a head and shoulders pattern, inverted head and shoulders pattern indicated by these purple uh, boxes, basically. And well, I think that if you get this uh, pattern, reversal pattern and break above the resistance trend line, that we're going to look at a uptrend continuation still 
and a, a challenge of this previous top here at you know close to 19k i think it was maybe 20k and perhaps a break of that and a break for a higher high you know bitcoin in my view is a little bit more like a commodity rather than a currency i, I see it like a gold more than um you know than a than a euro or a dollar because of the ultimately the supply is limited and i think that if it is limited or it grows very slowly until i think the year 2140 or something like that but percentage wise a lot of bitcoins are already on the market and i think you could say the same maybe about gold right of course gold supply will also increase uh, a little bit but um, a lot of it is also on the market already and with with currencies of course this, the monetary supply is something that is more flexible and, and and loose and can be determined by can be expanded by a central bank so i think it's more a commodity but anyhow that set aside it uh i think there will still be a, an uptrend continuation i remain long-term bullish but of course we need to see reversal signals here first before that becomes more likely so let's uh grab some live charts here now and uh, i know that ali was asking about the euro pound because i shared my analysis today with you on fxdd and that analysis has actually been invalidated right uh recently so we can reanalyze that but let me check what um what ali wrote euro pound long 87.60 87.80 this is a swing trade 87.49 stop loss 87.49 okay tp 90 yes all right let's take a look at that oh you don't see that apologies let's see there we go all righty so Yes. Well, I was thinking it could be a wave one, uh, two, but with the break of the bottom here, it is uh, not that wave one, two. And yeah, so from this perspective, what else could it be? Uh, it's to me probably still a wave C, but if it broke that bottom, I think I indicated it could go to the weekly S1, unfortunately. Uh, so that would mean that this is a wave five of C and it could tag 87.30. So let me see what Ali mentioned. Yeah, that would be in your, you know, standing in your way of uh, the stop loss, unfortunately. Um, so with, I mean, will it get there? We don't necessarily know what the turning spot will be, but that could be something to consider. Let's put a fib as well. And we see a 78.6 fib at 87.50 so roughly that could also be still a turning spot so i think there's going to be a bounce i it's just not that wave one two that i mentioned in the analysis today that is unfortunately invalidated uh, nothing we can do about that but uh if yeah it, i still think it's roughly in a bouncing spot either at the 78 s1 or 88 if it bounces exactly the 78.6 fib, your stop loss might survive, but it's close because the difference is only one and a half pips. So it really depends on how precise the bounce is. And of course, price can go a few pips below it and then turn around and still uh, still bounce. So best is not to widen the stop loss. That is a no-no. Uh, best is probably to either exit this trade at break even, which I think you roughly could still do because you entered roughly in this area and i would probably wait for a new setup in my view because you know the reason for the setup has been invalidated but there could still be a good reason in my view to to take the trade yeah it's now at 87.68 so i don't know exactly where you took it either you're up one pip or you're down 10 5 0 to 10 i'm not sure but um 
Of course, you can try to hang in there with the original stop loss. But the, the reason for a upside, in my view, was this bottom. I thought wave one here, wave two, and up it goes for wave three. And that is kind of out of the window at the moment. That doesn't mean that the overall... Ah, you took three. Now I understand. You took three positions. Got it. So the average price there is around 15.73. Okay. Yeah, for four, or I'm not sure exactly what the loss will be for, maybe with spread a little bit more. Um, yeah, it seems to be about a fourth, maybe a fourth of your original stop loss. Yeah, I would probably um, wait for a new setup, in my view. Uh, get rid of this one and wait for a new one. But, you know, if you if it depends on the risk you take and, you know, what kind of patience you have and how much you want to avoid a full loss, you know, those are really personal factors that everyone has to take into account themselves. But from a technical point of view, the trade is invalidated, uh, but we could still expect a bounce 78 if we get a bullish and candlestick pattern there that could still be a reversal that could start the euro pound upside either at the 78 as one or 88 of course if it breaks through this bottom at 86.54 well then you know that that's invalidated reason why i was looking at the upside in the euro pound was because to me it seemed like this is a wave a b c D, E, wave one, wave two, up for wave three. So that this, basically this triangle, this consolidation zone here on the Europan will break to the upside for at least uh, a retest of, of this top, right? The minus two at 92, minus 61.8 target at 93.80, maybe 95.50, maybe even a break of the previous high. Right, so if you like a long-term trade, you can even, you know, a trader could think about trading it here with a stop loss below the bottom and aiming for these big targets. But that's a swing trade. That's that's even not a swing trade. That's more like a position trade almost, right? And uh, that could be very lengthy in time. So that's not something that's interesting for me. I'm just sharing, uh, you know, ideas about that. Let me take a sip of my coffee. Um, so there's a lot of reward to risk ratio, but just a lengthy uh, period of time for that trade. If you're looking more for a swing trade, yeah, keep an eye on the four hour chart, right? Keep an eye on this bouncing area. But the reason why I show you the daily chart is because it's not just an ordinary four hour reversal. There could be, with an emphasis on could, a, you know, a huge pattern behind it. And that is the end of the ABCDE and the start of a wave one, two. So, could, you know, what is the chance of that? I don't know, maybe one out of three times that it will happen. But if it does, it could be huge and it could be really flying up. So, that, that, from that perspective, there's a lot of potential for the euro pound. If it, this is the end of wave E here, and this is indeed the wave one, two of a new uptrend. That, that could be huge, but of course... Uh, you know, nothing is foolproof in, in trading and I got to be flexible and it might not materialize as, as I expect. So as my analysis now, I think it will. So let's see. But R2R uh, is definitely there. Reward to risk ratio. All right. Let's take a look. You want to take a look at a few more live charts. What do you want to take a look at? Uh, what do you have? Interest to see. Those are Kimberly Light. These are weekly pivot points, I think. Yeah, classical pivot points. Let's add a gold.
All right. So from a higher time frame, this could be a triangle. This could be wave A, B, C, D, and down for E. So this could be wave E. It could make one more push up. Uh, finish the wave D maybe at the uh, wall. That's what a fib, to be very precise. Uh, 1320, 1340. Down it goes again for a wave E. That wave E could finish anywhere at the halfway mark. So for instance, if it goes up to 1320 like this, all right, we might get upside. Then, of course, ABC down could go to the 50 fib, 61, any of these fibs, in fact. That could finish wave V. But this, this pattern might take quite some time, right? We might get it down, then up to finish, finish D, and uh, then we might get three waves down. Because ultimately, I don't necessarily think that this will break up at least the first half of this year. I am not expecting that to happen uh, first half of 2019, maybe second half of 2019, but not the first six months. So I think that uh, we will see a expansion of this consolidation, this triangle that we're seeing still for for some while. Is is my guesstimate here, and of course, this specifically the timing perspective is is a little bit more difficult to estimate, but. I think uh, I, I don't think that the economy is giving gold necessarily a reason, a fundamental reason to move up that much. I, you know, looking at um, at gold's kind of behavior, it does tend to move on the last day of the week, on the first day of the week. It even moved in the last year of the decade. It tends to like. As far as I can see, just as this is my own observation, there's nothing statistically or something foolproof, all right? So just take it as a rule of thumb that I noticed, all right? So I want to be careful here. Uh, so, you know, would it maybe move at the end of 2019? That might be a little bit more likely that it kind of consolidates until later at the end of the 2019 and then maybe starts making that uptrend. All right, and this is a little bit of a pattern. It um, took too long to break into the upside, making a making a downside retracement, but making a bounce at the same time. If it breaks above this weekly pivot point, then ABC correction might be finished, might be ready for an uptrend again. Because this correction has lasted already, this is day 11. So if on Thursday or Friday, we get a break to the upside, that could be a continuation breakout. And the key level to keep an eye on is 1280, 85, 80 here, 1286, let's say. All right, break above that could indicate like this, expect a consolidation after that. And on Thursday, Friday, maybe to break out like this. Now, if it were to break again below the 21 EMA, if it breaks above it, but then below it again, of course, in that case, we are looking at a deeper retracement. Okay, maybe a quick note still on the Euro dollar. We got uh, bullish engulfing twins on the four hour chart. All right, so that is perhaps the bounce that we're, that I'm waiting for on the euro dollar. This is a four hour chart, this is a low time frame. And it has everything to do with the potential wave one, two that I thought the euro pound had too, but the euro dollar has not invalidated yet. And uh, if you look at. This, it could be an 88.6 fib bounce, 78.6 fib bounce. Ali mentioned the falling wedge line. Yeah, indeed. Another retest of, of that support, but another bounce as well. And a potential break now, if you put the resistance line of that falling wedge with these engulfing twins. So it, it might finally break now to the upside, might finally reverse. It was really slow, choppy correction to the downside. Uh, so let's see if we get the break. But with regard to higher time frames,
There we go. So yeah, we had just to recap here, we had a huge uptrend of the euro dollar. All right, beginning of 2000s, it lasted up to 2008, just before the uh, big recession. All right, then uh, the euro dollar started to move down, and this all was created by quantitative easing, these ups and downs, interest rates going down, etc. Then we had a very good dollar strength. All right, and uh, continuation a little bit as the U.S. economy started to improve and the U.S. started to increase interest rates. And we had a pretty sturdy correction to the upside, actually, um, followed by a downside again. All right, so how do we put this piece this together? So, so for the moment, I think that most likely is that this is a wave A, this is a wave B, and up we go for a wave C. But this wave B is not finished yet. I think that we're looking at five waves up, this being wave A, up for wave B, and down for wave C. The only thing that I'm keeping in mind is that if this wave C falls very quickly, like this, it might actually not be a wave C, and it could be a wave three. All right, so it, it really depends on how it falls. For the moment, though, upside, followed by um, downside, all right, seems the most likely. Then how will it respond to this FIB? How will it respond to the 78.6 FIB at 108? That's the main question. Is it pretty slow downside, followed by a bounce at the 78.6 FIB? We might expect to move up. If it's fast, impulsive, a lot of momentum, and we get a flag, we actually, then I revise my analysis. Then in that case, this is not a wave A, B, C. In that case, this is probably looking like an A, B, C here. And in that case, we had probably a, uh, a expanded correction, A, B, C like this. And we're looking at a, probably a new bearish A, B, C instead. So that is something to keep an eye on. Very important how price behaves as it bounces at 120-ish, I would say. All right. Falling asleep here, but uh, don't make the same mistake as the euro dollar. I, I do think that it's still in an interesting spot for and has good space to the upside. Of course, if it breaks below 112.50 with a good daily candle close below it, well, then of course that would change things. And we're looking at an immediate bearish breakout. And if we do get that breakout, that um, yeah would indicate the downtrend continuation potential towards 110. All right. All right, folks. Well, that's, I guess, about it. Uh, I discussed what I wanted to show you. I don't see any other follow-up questions at the moment. Uh, we got a lot of webinars coming up. All right. So keep an eye on those. Fibonacci, part one, two, and three, mastering the, the markets. Part one and two and three coming up as well with FXDD. So looking forward to that. Let me share you how you can get to those webinars one second ah all right i don't have it here well check out my tweet twitter you'll find uh warnings how to sign up but you can also go to the same uh, links that you had here we'll put them in the youtube chat youtube uh, upload down below so you can find the links below YouTube. And if you're in the live webinar, then you already know uh, how to find it. Or you can check out, of course, FXDD website and check out the webinars there. All right, so thanks for joining. Wish you all great trading. Uh, these webinars, one is gonna take place on Sunday, actually, the upcoming Sunday. And uh, they'll be spread over uh, January, February, upcoming months. We we'll have some extra webinars with FXDD. All right, so wish you all great trading and see you soon. Cheers.